welcome to 5 minute 40k, the short sharp look at all things hobby. Today we're having a look at another tournament winning list for the Sisters of Battle, this time piloted by John Lennon at the Lone Star Open. So as mentioned this list was taken by John Lennon of Art of War to the Frontline Gaming Lone Star Open in Allen, Texas on the 23rd of July, so just this past weekend at the time of recording. Uh, the Art of War team, which John's a part of, is a really cool group of top players including Nick Nanavati and Richard Siegler, um, so their channel is well worth a look if you're interested in the competitive side of 40k. He also had a really interesting list which opens up with an Eben Chalice Outrider. Now Eben Chalice and Allure are a bit like the Ultramarines of the Sisters, they were the First Order and their order ability is quite cool. It allows you to have two Sacred Rites active for your Eben Chalice unit, i.e. the one you get as a Sisters player plus another one. And each time you use a Miracle Dice during the game, you can discard another one to make the one that you're actually using a 6 automatically. So if you've got like a 2 and a 1 that you're not using, for example, you just get rid of one of them and the other becomes a 6, which is really quite useful. In terms of the HQs and the Outrider, he's got Celestine and her Gemini Superior, a real bully unit and a real uh, key unit when John talks about the list on and his stream on Art of War following the tournament. Um, I've done a video on Celestine and Gemini, so if you want to know what they can do and why they're so good, uh, both as a bully unit in projecting power across the board and also as something to counter charge um, and get in and also very difficult for your opponents to get rid of potentially, uh, do check that video out on my channel. In the elite slot he had a dog martyr, um, he'd given this the relic the Sigil Ecclesiasticus which is pretty standard and allows it to intone two hymns in a turn. In terms of the hymns he gave it the Litany of Enduring Faith and the Verse of Holy Piety. This gives plus one to the Shield of Faith Invans and allows you to turn on a sacred rite you're not using for um, an Adeptus Sororitas core or character unit within six. So each of those is Shield of Faith uh, Invan adding on and then also Verse of Holy Piety turning on a sacred rite that you're not using. Quite cool because you can have up to three active for one Evan Chalice unit uh, but I suspect uh, this was more used to give an additional sacred rite to a Bloody Rose unit which we'll get to in the patrol in a second. He also used the Saint in the Making Strap for 1 CP to give the Warlord trait Terrible Knowledge, which is the Ebon Chalice Warlord trait. This is really cool, it means if the Warlord's on the battlefield, your first Miracle Dice you get at the start of the first battle round is automatically a 6, and you can gain CP you spend back uh, on a 5+. plus. So good way of doing some command point farming and also making sure you have a 6 in your pocket at the start of the game. He also had a unit of 9 Celestian Sacrosants with the Anointed Halberds and a Spear of the Faithful, the 5 point upgrade on the Superior. Uh, really good unit and key uh, as their bodyguard rule means that characters that are within 3 inches of them can't be shot or can't be targeted by ranged attacks. Um, John commented in his stream this was really really important especially into meta picks like Admech for uh, protecting both Celestine, the Dogmata and also Morven Val who we'll come to in a bit but is in the Bloody Rose Patrol. Again I've done a video on Celestine in Sacrosanct and what they can do so do check that out on elsewhere on the channel. In the fast attack slot you have two units of five dominions with storm bolters really good with those blessed bolt mortal wound output and also the scout move that they have at the start of the game and two units of five seraphim each with two hand flamers really good for deep striking doing actions bit of horde clearance with their bolt pistols and with those flamers and they can use evan chalice's native strat cleansing flames for one cp which means you add four inches to the range of all flame weapons and four rolls of a four plus when you make attacks with those uh, give you a mortal wound up to a maximum of three in the heavy support slot, he had two units of five retributors with two multi melter, two Ministorum heavy flamers, and two Armorium cherubs. Again, leaning into that cleansing flames uh, flamer thing. Also, the really good multi melter um, usage to take on tough targets, and also a good candidate for the Holy Trinity strap. One CP for plus one to wound if you target something with a bolter, a flamer, and a melter from the same unit. He also had two rhinos with storm melters in the dedicated transport slot. Over to the patrol, which was Bloody Rose. We all know what Bloody Rose can do, plus one attack and an additional minus one AP when you are charging, are charged, or heroically intervene. In the sort of no force org slot, he had a Repentia Superior just to give power to the Repentia you'll see in the list later on. Obviously it allows the uh, Repentia to select a unit of Repentia which can then advance and do a 3d6 drop the lowest charge. Um, that has to be done in the command phase so they can't be in a Rhino if you do that. And also plus one to wound on those Repentia if the Superior is within six inches of the unit. 
In the HQ slot, he's got Morven Val, really, really good uh, HQ unit, lots of output, and able to select a unit in the army to get full re-rolls on hits and wounds. Uh, really good on the uh, on the Retributors and on the Ze Zephyrim, I think uh, John commented on his stream. Um, her, she was the Warlord because she has to be, and her Warlord trait is Righteous Rage, re-rolling all hits and wounds in combat. Again, I've done a video on Morven Val, do check it out elsewhere on the channel to learn what she can do. Just a unit of five battle sisters in the troop slots to uh, fill out the patrol. In the elite slot, two units of eight repenture, really dangerous, choppy unit, um, which uh, again is sort of bolstered by the presence of the repentant superior and deadly in Bloody Rose in many ways. Also with their um, strap of Bloody Rose, which is tear them down one CP for sixes to auto wound, allowing you to get around things like transhuman. In the fast attack slot, two times five uh, Zephyrim with the pennant, allowing them to re-roll charges. Again, Zephyrim in Bloody Rose, really, really dangerous. And John mentioned these as a target, as I say, for Morven Val's re-roll ability, just to make their wounding even more dangerous because they are obviously minus four AP on the charge in Bloody Rose and they've got that extra attack. John also gets some extra props for bringing a fortification network, in this case, the Battle Sanctum, the greatest and worst bit of terrain ever. Um, this is a sister's, a giant sister's terrain piece, uh, which has a whole bunch of terrain traits, also gives minus one leadership to chaos units within six inches of it, and uh, allows an Adeptus Sorotus Core or Cult Imperialist Priest unit within it to complete the Pray to the Saint action, which allows you to gain an additional Miracle Dice per turn. Um, there was player place terrain at the Lone Star Open, which was how John Lennon was able to use this. Um, it doesn't see much play in uh, any other um, competitive scene because obviously there isn't the room to put it down on the table per GW's own mission pack, uh, tournament mission pack rules. Um, worth noting um, that John did say if he had to replace this with anything else um, in an ordinary, I guess, non-player place terrain tournament, he would probably go for a Bloody Rose Rhino just to protect the Repentia um, from um, a non-line of sight shooting that exists if it becomes a more of a big thing in the meta. You know, for example, Hive Guard have that, Plague Burst Crawlers, uh, Whirlwind, um, and also we know there are a couple of Orc units coming which look to be very popular, the Kill Rig, which has some good non-line of sight shooting. Overall, a really, really interesting list and quite interesting for me as a Sisters player. John commented that he thinks that the Evan Chalice is a far better order for your shooting, shall we say, uh, block of your army than Argent Shroud, which everyone thought, including him, was going to be the way to go. But he just thinks Evan Chalice gives you a lot more bang for your buck and some really good trait, really good abilities and traits that you can build in if you're using a lot of flamer weapons as well. So overall, a really interesting list and uh, apologies for the long run time on this video, but I think well worth exploring uh, a list that's gone to the top of a really, really quite competitive uh, GT. Thanks for watching. I really hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed it. And uh, let me know in the comments below what you'd like to see in future episodes of 5 Minute 40k.